Hi, everyone. Jim Benneman checking in. You know, more than one in 10 Americans is impacted by a sleep disorder. And Colorado has one of the highest incidences of central sleep apnea than other states because of our high altitude and lower oxygen concentrations. This is a serious issue. Joining us now, Dr. Raj Turkanda from Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in Denver. Doctor, thanks for being with us. Tell us, we know sleep apnea is a serious issue, but a lot of people don't know much about it. What is it? So sleep apnea basically means a stop of airflow into your lungs. That's what apnea means. And there's two types. There's obstructive sleep apnea, which most people know something about. And then there's this other entity called central sleep apnea, which is less common nationwide, but more common in, in Colorado due to our altitude. You know, we know that uh, some people think that snoring could be an indicator. Talk more about the snoring issue and also other signs that someone might have sleep apnea. Sure. So snoring is a common symptom of obstructive sleep apnea. That's where the throat collapses and airflow stops to the lungs. So that's, uh, that's the most common, but you don't have to have snoring to actually have sleep apnea. Other symptoms include waking up at night, gasping or bed partner saying that you stop breathing that's mm -hmm. that's an, often a one of the first indicators um, and then during the day the symptoms can be daytime fatigue difficulty to focus difficulty concentrating brain fog as a common term now um, and that those are symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea is it possible that someone could be a snorer and not have sleep apnea Yes. So good question. So you can snore and snoring is due to vibration of the soft palate and the uvula, that structure that hangs down in the center of the mouth. That that vibrates and causes the noise of snoring, but obstructive sleep apnea is actually obstructions or a collapse of the throat at different levels besides or in addition to the soft palate. It can be due to the tongue falling back and stopping the flow of air, particularly when you're on your back, it's worse. And talk a little bit, doctor, just about uh, it, it might make somebody fatigued, uh, maybe a little bit tired, a little dizzy, but this really is a serious heart problem if you've got a severe apnea problem, correct? Definitely. So sleep apnea is associated with an increased risk of heart attacks, stroke, sudden death at night, high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, and other diseases that are associated with it, including diabetes. What are some of the treatments for the apnea? So with obstructive sleep apnea, I generally think of uh, treatment into five categories. Weight loss, mass therapy or CPAP, um, a dental device called a mandibular advancement device, nose and throat surgery, and a new procedure um, called upper airway stimulation. That's for obstructive sleep apnea. You know, uh, we know that uh, it's nice to have options because I'm familiar with the CPAP machines. Some people really struggle to get used to those, don't they? Yes. About 50% of patients tolerate it well and 50% don't. So it's kind of a coin toss. And most people will know whether they tolerate CPAP within the first month of, of getting the machine. And so there's a lot of people who are untreated out there with the machines in the corner of the room not being used. You know, you mentioned uh, it's a, a sleep partner might be able to point out some of these issues to someone who is struggling with this. What if you sleep alone? Yes, so um, now there's sleep apps out there. You can get them on your phone that uh, will detect snoring. And some of them may even be able to detect uh, sleep apnea. That's probably the best way to at least get an idea. Um, and if you're really having symptoms of fatigue and you think you're snoring and waking up with a dry throat, the best thing is to go see your physician. And, and finally, get sleep. yeah, uh, finally, doctor, I think uh, at least based on what I've learned personally about sleep apnea and all these issues, it does seem to be something that far too few, f far f too few people are familiar with. It's a it's a serious issue that deserves more attention. Definitely, yes, because of these other diseases and, and bad and bad things that can be associated with untreated sleep apnea, it's important to screen for that. And um, even in Colorado, where we are the leanest state in the United States, in the nation, I, we still have a lot of patients with sleep apnea, many untreated.
Yeah. Well, doctor, hopefully this convinces some people to find out if they've got an issue or perhaps they think there might be something like snoring and they'll follow up with a doctor's visit. So uh, thank you so much for helping us spread the word here on CBSN Denver and we appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you.